Hello, welcome back to Dawn's Tailor Made. So, mug rugs we're looking at. I'm guessing you may have seen these before. Um, let me just log on so I can see your comments. There you go. So, yes, a mug rug, it basically it's a coaster. It's a coaster that's made out of fabric. They were a big craze um, a couple of years ago and they are such a quick gift. Um, my husband has everything um, that he, if he wants to buy something, then he will go and buy it. So he's really, really difficult to, to buy gifts for. So something that he does do is drink a lot of coffee and um, he has a new desk that he needs to protect. So I'm thinking a gift of a mug rug. So I just wanted to show you that this isn't the perfect fabric to use. Um, the fabric that I've chosen for my husband um, is obviously it was it was bought for purpose. But I just wanted to show you that the um, you can use anything. So what you would do is you would put your wadding behind here, and then you could free motion around your pandas, and then you could do some stitching in the ditch or some stippling or anything around like that. But this is the size that we're going to be working towards. Okay, but I just didn't want you to think that it was just, just for the um, for the pattern that I'm using. So I'm sure lots of you will know who this is. <laughs> if you don't, um, he's a character from um, a Star Wars spin-off. So this is the Mandalorian, um, and my husband absolutely loves it. I do need to keep my voice down because he is just downstairs. Morning, Carol and I don't want him to hear. So I thought this was perfect for, A, for quilting, because it has a border all the way around it. Although all I did on this one is I just drew um, the border. I made sure that it was the same size, because this is about the right size. Once we've quilted this and we've allowed for seam allowance, this would be the perfect size. Morning, Tracer, morning, Karen. So um, I will pop it on here, because I know when I show my other rulers, um, some people say that the glare off them is um, is quite jarring. So, our guy is, he's just under five inches and he's three and a half inches across. So, what I decided to do was I placed him within, can you see this? Sorry, you can't. Let me just move that forward. There we go. That's better. Morning, Helen. So, I was just trying to figure out, and if you do have a mat, even if you have a smaller one, you don't have to have a huge one, so I've got a, a smaller one here. Um, by, play, by using a mat and not just rulers, um, it really does help with getting things exact. So I was trying to figure out how big I needed my um, strips around the outside to be. So I just placed him on here, and I thought, well... A two inch one is probably going to, once I've done the half an inch seam allowance, because I will need, this is going to be my seam allowance here. So this is going to fold back. Okay, so I moved it over half an inch because that um, that will disappear, um, as I said, when, when we do our seam allowance. And then I thought, well then looking at that, that's going to be the right size. So I then um, thought about the backing would probably need to be, if you wanted to have these measurements. Um, Helen's saying, is everyone okay? We've got a little bit of snow, Helen, but really not much. In fact, looking out the windows, I think it's, I don't know if it's actually raining. I think it's snowing now, but no, we've got hardly anything. How's everyone else? Hope everyone's okay. So, um, it's going to be about, the backing is going to be about five inches by maybe six and a half inches but I'm not going to cut the backing now because famously when you put wadding on things do grow do get smaller um, do get bigger they do all sorts of things um, they don't start off they don't end up how you started off so I'm going to cut my um, my background fabric after so I've just got enough piece that I know is going to be big enough so trying to figure out my strips I decided I wanted them to be two inches across and then I needed them to extend two inches either side. So that is going to be my strip, which is going to, yeah, Helen has a covering. I think that's what we would call ours, <laughs> just a covering. Everything looked a little bit white. So this would be our two inches, which is the same size. And then there's my seam allowance, which is a quarter of an inch and folded back. That's now going to be one and a half inches. 
Okay, so if you wanted to do the same measurement, so we need one for this side. Actually, I'll show you the other way around because otherwise, so you need one at the bottom, but you don't need to extend that one because you do the top and bottom like this and then you add your sides afterwards. Okay, and then he will be encased inside. Um, I'll then, I will have my iron on, so you then need to press your seams out. Okay, pressing, not ironing, so you're placing on the top. Morning, Margaret. Teresa says, we have no snow, but it's trying to snow now. Just cold. Yes, ah, really cold here. Ours, ours snow is going, but it's really cold. Um, so those are the measurements. I will, I'll pop them in. Um, so where it says at the top, how to cut, quilt and sew a quick mug rug, I will put the measurements um, under there so that you haven't got to write all this down. Okay, and then when we put our wadding behind, I am going to get out my free motion foot. I did promise you that I would get out my um pedal but it i can't find it this is what happened the last time i couldn't find it and then i had to learn how to um how to use it um use my machine with my start stop button so my sincerest apologies everyone i have looked everywhere i'm worried that it's in the loft um and although my husband can i reach the loft <laughs> um yeah <laughs> we're not going to be going up there anytime soon so um again my apologies yes we've got lots of snow coming down now so yes, we're going to be free motioning. Now I thought that this was a good, um, a good thing to free motion because there's lots of straight lines. There are some curved lines, and I should just build up the picture as much as I want to. I should probably just um, go over the black bit here to make that stand out. And I think it's going to be a really nice, um, really effective sew. Um, if anybody is interested in this fabric, I have forgotten the link, um, but here's the whole piece. So I bought half a metre, so you can see there's the repeat. I bought half a metre, oh, hang on. It is from Fabric Jungle, and they are in Kings Lynn. Okay, so anybody, if you're interested in that fabric, that is where I got it from. Possibly a bit, oh, actually, I can say, Valentine's Day is Sunday, isn't it? So you could, if you ordered some now, you could get it if you wanted it. Um, because it came within two days when I ordered mine, because I thought it was going to be a little while. But so yes, if you've got a um, a Mando fan in your house, um, we've got quite a few in our family. So this is going to be my husband's, and I'm going to be making lots more. Um, so yes, so we're going to be quilting at the back, and then I will be adding the. Um, we'll be then free motioning, okay. So everything will be done, and then we'll be putting the the backing onto the top, and then we'll be bagging it out, going all the way around. And then we'll be sewing another seam around the outside, which will then seal up our hole that we've left for turning. So let's get sewing. I'm just going to pull this over here. Morning, Carol. So I need to make sure I don't lose any of my pieces. Just bring in the machine. It's so good being able to... I've watched lots of other um, vloggers, as they call us, and YouTubers. Um, when they are um, reading their comments and they can see so well and I couldn't figure out how and obviously it's because so I've got the laptop over there and I can just see everything there's a little bit of a delay so if I do pause that's why okay so I've got black thread in the top and black bobbin thread um, because I think that's going to be perfect for I mean it didn't show up I used it on this one and it didn't show up through my lines here okay um, because the grey and then I'm pressing to the side so remember to have your iron um, ready when you're doing this and we are just going to use our default stitch so machine off machine on I shall just cover that up and if it's a little bit dark I apologize one of my bulbs went literally as I turned it on this morning so we've only got let me just move it in a little bit we've only got the bigger light um, shining on us today I haven't got the little spotlight so if it is a bit dark I do apologize so as I said, we are going to attach um, our, we're going to call this a fake binding because what we're going to do is we're going to sew around it and it's going to look as if we've bound it. So you just need to measure up and pop a pin in. I will, I am going to sew these um, rather quickly because it's, I'm guessing it's the free motion that you'd like to see. Now, if I was doing lots of these, I would have them all sat like this and then I would push that one through and then the next one through, the next one through and the next one through and then turn without cutting them off. And it saves that little bit of thread and it just saves that little bit of time. Okay, 
So I'm going to line up our edges and all I'm using is um, the foot on my machine. So I'm lining up the fabric here. Don't need to be closer. Lining up the fabric here. Okay, and then I'm just going to needle down, slow down a little bit for the noise and just sew all the way down to the bottom. And that pin is going to be in the way. So she says, let's try and move it. There we go. And then all the way down. So do you all celebrate um, or do something on Valentine's Day? Or do you tend to ignore it? We don't actually um, celebrate Valentine's Day, although that is what, I've, what I said. Our anniversary of when we met is on the 16th um, of February. So we don't do Valentine's Day, we do do our anniversary. But these gifts, these are gifts for any time. At the moment, I mean, lots of people are staying in, lots of people might like something um, sweet to go through the post. So what you could do is you could, um, you could make a few of these. They're light enough to post. Um, I am going to be, I can't say too much just in case certain people um, are watching, um, but I've just realized actually that I may have already given the game away. Um, but yes, so I'm pressing here and not ironing, okay? I did push that. So just pressing the seams down. Um, I am going to be putting three of these in the post because so many of um, my family absolutely love Mandalorian and I was just thinking that they'd be a perfect perfect gift just to cheer everyone up at the moment so when I post I mean it all depends on where you um where you post it from and and how much um you put it in um but they are just a quick gift to um to send off to people so I'm just lining those up with that I apologize you can't see I'm just lining that up. So I've just pressed the seams out, okay? So I'm just lining this up. Actually, I will move that up a little bit. Lining that up. Trader said, yeah, we do, but we have only been together for three years. Oh, still in the honeymoon phase. Do you know, my husband and I, Teresa, um, we've been together for 13 years and uh, we are still in the honeymoon phase. <laughs> Lots of people go, yeah, when they hear that, so... We would definitely be celebrating our anniversary. There you go. And then turn it over and then pop your other piece down. And then make sure you're lining that up, not only with that seam on the outside, but this um, piece of fabric that you've put on the other side. Make sure those are both level. I'm going to pop it down just so that I can. It's easier to see when it's down. This will be easier for you guys to do and quicker because you're not trying to check the camera angles or anything. It really is a uh, a quick sew. I mean, in an hour, once you, I mean, including all your cutting and things like that. So lining up again with the edge of my foot and just the 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 stitch just in its default position. Do a back stitch, and then just going to go all the way down. So this is an introduction really to quilting because what we do when we're quilting is um, we do add borders. So this is um, this is the way, if any of you saw, this is the way, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, if Brad's watching now, he'll be laughing. Um, that's the uh, tagline for the Mandalorian, if anyone doesn't know. Um, so, this um, is the way that quilters bind their um, their quilts. So anyone that watched um, last week, that is how I did the bigger quilt. Now I do have, um, I did order one um, of the panels. Um, hopefully I'm not giving that game away either as a gift for somebody. So um, I will be sewing it all over again. And I am going to do what I said I was going to do. I will post pictures when I'm done. So I'm going to do a much more detailed um, border around it so some of you may be interested to watch that 
Yeah, Teresa says, I know people say you up to me too. <laughs> Marion says, 44 years married. Love that. Don't bother. Helen, 35 years. Wow. That's amazing, everyone. Oh, so, so cool. So again, we're just pressing. So the pressing is you put your iron down and you don't. It's so hard for me, though, to not. And I learned something yesterday. I mean... This, I mean, as we all know, I've been doing this a little while now. Um, and I was watching um, the channel yesterday. Uh, it was a rerun. I can't think of the lady's name. I do apologise. Um, she was on with John. Um, and she was doing the Liberty Fabrics. And um, she was saying that she doesn't use steam until her final press. Because if you, once you've used steam, that's it. It's kind of set. So, you know, you learn something new every day. As Christine Taylor says, every day is a school day. So there you go. So you can see I have gone over my lines just a little bit. Um, but that's more to do with the fact that I'm stood back here and trying to reach. But um, I'm sure your, um, your corners will be um, much easier. And if you're using a fabric like this, you can't tell if that is perfectly straight or not. So if you're doing your first one, then, you know, don't worry. Um, just take those threads off. Um, if you're doing your first one, then maybe don't use something that has its own frame. But I'm sure my husband is not going to mind. I said, I enjoyed my wee break from homeschooling stuff. Catch up later. Thanks again. Oh, yes, enjoy your homeschooling, Marin. Marin. Um, I've got a little one down, little one downstairs. She says he's six foot one. Um, and he is doing so well, um, but he is nearly 16, so he's kind of, I go and off, I offer to help, but I don't really know what he's doing. And I'm sure, sure some of you ladies will have the, uh, and gen gentlemen, I apologise, um, lots of you will be in the same boat thinking, well, we didn't do it that way when I was young. And I remember my dad saying that to myself and my sisters. So I've just popped the wadding on the back. Now, as I said, you don't know if this is going to grow, what's going to happen. So all I'm doing is I'm lining up with, so this is a half an inch measure here, and I'm just lining it up. I really need to tighten up my, um, gosh, words are failing me again, my rotary cutter. So we now have, now if you have, I think they call it 505 spray, um, you can add comment in the comments if it's not called that, um, where they spray and then they stick it down. And mine still hasn't arrived where I ordered it from quite a while ago now, nearly two weeks ago. So I am just going to pin here and that's just going to secure it enough. Now, if this turns slightly, it's not going to, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to start probably with this bit. And just go backwards and forwards because I want that to be on the straight stitch, okay? Um, and then I'm going to then do the free motion around. I'm not going to sew down here yet because, as Sally Ann said, start in the center and work your way out, and then obviously that pushes your wadding outwards, okay? So, my foot. Now, if anybody needs to see this, hopefully you can see well enough. So, machine off. I'm dropping off my foot and put your foot somewhere safe, okay? So, I'm going to pop it here and then I'm going to know where it is. And then you need to bring in your screwdriver, as she says, looking for it. There it is. I have um, a couple of tools on my desk and pots and things, but they do make it quite messy. So I move it when I do my live and then I can't find anything. So this one again, don't lose that one. So I'm just going to pop it under here because as my fabric goes over, it's not going to get lost. So I'll just tip this back so you can see. So this piece here, this is where you tighten up your screws. And this bar here has to sit over the top of there. Okay, and then you line up as you do when you put your other one on. There is a hole here and a gap there and they just meet perfectly. And you just screw it in and you're done. It's literally how easy it is. And 
Um, for those of you that are a bit worried, just just do it over and over again. Just repeat it, um, and you will get that you will um, get much much quicker, and you won't even think about it when you put it on. So needle down, needle back up, something long and thin to just pull that out, and now both of my fabrics are going out the back. Both of my fabrics, both of my threads. So let's move this in just so that I can see as well as you can. There we go. So as I said, I'm going to do the, the I did say I was going to do the straight line first, didn't I? So feed dogs down. Nobody shouted at me. Maybe you would have done if I'd have carried on. So feed dog down. It's quite funny um actually. Sue, um Lily she messaged me, I don't know if any of you saw it, she messaged me and she said, you put your feed dogs back up? And I hadn't, so I quickly came upstairs and did it as I thought about it, and that was quite late Saturday evening. Um, and then I need to go zero on my, this is my width, and then down, this is my the stitch length, zero and zero. There we go, and then I'm just going to start slowly. Once I put my needle in, and then I should go a little bit faster. So I'm hoping I'm not going too fast for you all to follow those new ones, new people that um, find this is all new to you. So I am just going to needle down. Now I need realise this isn't the best colour to do, black on black. Um, but when we go up, get up here, you will be able to see a bit easier. So I'm going to start it, and what will happen, when the needle goes back up and down, it, it forms a little knot, so therefore I don't have to um, to actually put a knot in, okay? So a bit faster. Now I am actually, um, you don't always have to do this, because obviously you can go backwards and forwards. But I just want to get his shoulder in there, okay? So, you, but I want to have it. It's much easier. Um, I think it was Kay that was saying she found it harder to go side to side. So I find going backwards and forwards um, much easier. I'm I'm with her on that one. It is a bit trickier to do the side to side. Now I just realised I don't have my gloves on. So I'm just going to grab those. Where did I oh, hang on? They're just down here. Oh, excuse me. Apologies, everyone. This is um, a note to um, to all of you. Um, before you start sewing, get everything ready that you need. Be prepared. But as I said, normally everything is within perfect grasp because I have such a big table and so many boxes and stuff. Everything is just where I need it to be. But when I'm doing a live, um, I tend to, to move some of the stuff out of the way. So I'm just going to go down to his shoulders and then back up now I should go a little bit faster hopefully that's not too noisy for you all I know it's quite noisy the video on Saturday because I had this up on a box so that you could all hear what I was doing so he's just got some sort of folds in his I don't know what it is that he wears actually. I'm just putting those folds in. Oh, our thread has broken. So if that happens to you, don't worry. So I'm going to keep the foot down, but I'm going to put the needle up. Now it has moved, okay? But um, we're not going to worry too much about that. Now, um, you all know this by now. We snip at the top and then we pull wherever our thread is so I'm going to pull that out now it has actually broken so I'm not going to keep that one because it's not going to be very good for anything else I want to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-thread okay and then I'm going to a little bit slower because sometimes if you go fast when you're free motioning it can put too much tension on ah tension down to a two See, now this is why I do this. Why do you wear gloves, Carol? Carol, I bought these gloves, honestly, and I'm not being sponsored to, to sell them because these are not the ones, these aren't from um, Sewing Street. Um, these I bought elsewhere. Um, but I did a huge quilt 
um, last week and I then had to do a second one and these gloves arrived as I started the second one and I absolutely could not believe how much easier it was. So these have grips on them and what it means is I can just move it so much easier. Um, they really have, they were really cheap and they just, they are amazing. I was saying as, you know, people were laughing that you can't lick your fabric anymore and um, what I meant was you sometimes lick your fingers um, and just pull your fabric and, you know, if you're giving this away as a gift, you don't want to be licking your fabric or licking your fingers and putting it on your fabric. So these are amazing. I mean, I've I've free, done free motion for nine years, um, and I this I've only had these a week, not even a week. And I just I would recommend them to anyone. So they really really have made such a difference to me. Right, I'm going to take this opportunity to turn this guy around. Okay, and then I'm going to go now. The bit that is most important about um, the Mandalorian doesn't matter I mean if you're doing your panda the bit that would be important would be how perfect his eyes were so this is um oh the important bit is this um bit on his face so I'm going to really concentrate and go slow here so needle down okay so I'm going to do the circle I'm hoping you guys can just see this now, because I started again and my th I wasn't able to bring my thread down, I'm just going to snip it off here, okay? So, I'm going to bring this down. Now, as I've said, I can't see this as perfectly as you guys. When you are doing yours, you will be able to, you will be right over the top of your um, free motion and you'll find it much easier. So these gloves are just helping me be able to just creep backwards and forwards. I'm going to put that as part of his cloak down here and then back up as straight as I can. So I did see lots of you um, doing some free motion houses and somebody even did a flower at the weekend. Um, and I got lots of people, those were just the ones on the page I had lots of people um, sending me messages and pictures on Messenger too. So it's so lovely to see lots of you trying your free motion um, and getting the feel for it. I mean, I did do a post this morning about um, well-being. It's very important at the moment with, you know, lots of uncertainty and we're not able to see our families. And I don't want to, you know, I want this to be a positive, positive um video but you know just doing some free motion to me I mean I'm concentrating now um, and so I'm not thinking about uh, you know other things and that's what I find I get from sewing when I'm sewing and I started knitting again last night um, thanks to Deb Harris um, and you know that just I was watch the TV was on and I wasn't really watching it I was just concentrating on my stitches um, so anything like that that you can do that just stops your mind thinking about everything else is such a good thing. So I do highly recommend free motioning. And, you know, if you can have a little bit of a laugh at yourself, if it's not working, if it's not going that well, um, and, you know, you'll just enjoy creating something. I mean, people were doing their houses, like I said, so you were going over the top of something like I am. But if you just did it on some um, some fabric that's got a small print um, and just draw and play and just mess around with it, it's such a lovely, lovely thing to do. So, there we go. There is our quilted person. Hopefully you can see the, the bumps on there. And this bit of wadding, I mean, it's not going to protect the table. It's not a heat um, resistant one. Okay, but it's going to bit give a bit of a um a bit of a protection. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in those rulers. Sorry if they do reflect. I know that um they do give off um a bit of a reflection. You guys can see my lights and stuff. So I'm just going to Let's see if you can see. So I'm just lining up now. These rulers are really good. Um, I've only, I've had this one for a really really long time, 
um, and I've only just recently got these square ones and rectangular ones and what it does it means that you can um, you can put a line anywhere you want so there's so many grids down here so I'm going to match that up with what is the one and a half okay um, and then I'm just going to take the edge off so um, if I had the, the the long one I wouldn't be able to do that But, you know, I, I nine years, we keep saying, with this sewing machine. Um, so I can do that same again. So it's a one, one and a half, and then I'm taking off the edge. Now, I've noticed that there is too much, um, so I'm going to have to bring it back in. So I'm going to need to do one and a quarter inches. Okay. So... doesn't mean I have to do the same on the other side so I'm going to do this one one and a half but look how quick this is you couldn't do this with um scissors this quickly now I know my nan she never used um a rotary cutter so you know they aren't essential but they do definitely make things a little bit quicker I think that my rotary cutter has come unscrewed I'm going to put it there to remind myself to to tighten it up so now you can see we have our um our rectangle okay and this is my backing fabric it probably needs a bit more of a, a press so i'm going to pop that on the top and to line it up with as little waste as possible okay and then i'm going to just follow those lines that we just made. I put a new blade in, so I'm being very careful. I put a new blade in, so I am just trying not um, to touch it. But I think I need to put it back in again. I know there are a few videos on YouTube of how to replace your blade. So I think maybe I need to go back. So please be very, very careful if you are using a rotary cutter. My fingers are getting very close to that blade. So I'm just gonna take this side off. Now I'm gonna leave that bit as long as I can because as you know, my free motion pieces can be quite small. So that is a big enough piece, um, you know, that could be um, anything. So as I said, I could put everything into my thread catcher and then I just go through it once I finish my sew and see if there are any bigger pieces that I can, that I can use. So take that scrap away. So here we go. Now I think I'm going to leave um, the turning gap at the top. Because as this is going to be used, it's going to be further away from the person. So if I don't end up with a perfect line here, the um, the mug rug is going to be facing that way. Okay. So I will pop some pins in to remind me to leave a gap. I think that's probably big enough. Let's move all this out of the way. Bring back in the machine. Now, I don't know if we did it at the weekend whether I showed you how to remove the foot. So it's just the same as putting it on. So machine off, undo your screw. Remember to place it somewhere. You're not going to lose it. The sun has come out and our snow has stopped. It's no longer snowing. So I'm wondering if that is going to be it for the day. Although, I'm going to be in here sewing, so it's not really going to matter too much to me. So if you did want snow, I hope you've got it. And if you don't want snow, I hope you haven't got it. I'm not trying to find my the screw hole there. There we go. It's because I was looking out the window, looking at the snow on the, on the horizon. And there isn't any. There we go. So foot up, foot underneath, and it just picks it up by itself. There we go, and then I'll just pop that 
damn it. I have pin cushions everywhere. What I've found um, with using different fabrics and actually buying different pins is different. So I've used purple on here. Um, but if, you know, if I was if I was sewing on a purple piece, then I wouldn't want to use the purple pins because they do disappear. I discovered that at the weekend. So I'm trying to keep um, all my pins separated. And I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven different pin cushions. <laughs> Is that, is that a record? Has anybody else got 11 pin cushions? So I am putting this, yes, I know I'm putting it on top of the pin, but I'm then going to pull the pin out. So I'm using the same seam allowance, okay? And because we turned our machine on and off again, um, it's gone back to our default stitch. To bring the feed dogs back up, well, they do um, tend to come up themselves. Once you start sewing, once you move the button. Apologies for the noise, everyone. My machine is heavy. There we go. So I'm just going to line that up, as I said, with the um, outside of my foot. And then I'm going to go down until what I think is a quarter of an inch here, and then I'm going to turn. So needle down, back stitch, and then just down to the end. Stop, turn, and it's just sitting on that lighter grey fabric, as you can see. And then down to the other side, just trying to keep, I am slightly at an angle, so. And the thing we need to remember to do when we are sewing our corners is once we finish, we do need to snip those corners off because it will make all the difference um, when you're turning that out. So because there's a lot of fabrics up here, I'm just going to smooth that down and then go down to the other end. If you do make um, some sort of mug rug, or you do any more free motion, um, then please share on one of the pages. I know that by sharing their posts at the weekend, um, you did inspire other people. I mean, I said that I um, I took a, I did my knitting again last night, and that was because um, Deb Harris had shared a scarf um, that she was making. Um, which just led me on to um, looking at scarves with pockets. That's what she'd made. And I just got out my my knitting needles and my wool. So, you know, inspiring other people is such a lovely gift for you to give. And if you know how much pleasure you get from sewing or knitting or crocheting, that's another thing. Um, I'm going to try it myself, try again at crocheting later. I don't know how successful it will be. Um, I have tried to learn before. Um, if Nikki Reed is watching, I apologise because she tried to teach me. Um, to be fair, we did only have one lesson. But I did say I'm going to give up on it, but I'm not. I'm going to try again. Just as you guys, you know, you you try free motioning. You've not done it before. You know, I'm going to try some crochet. Because um, I keep talking to you or saying, this is easy, you change your foot, you can do this. And if I'm not pushing myself, then a little bit of a hypocrite. So I used Betsy just to go all the way around, so I don't actually need to clip my corners now. Um, I need to take those threads off. See, didn't put my scissors back in the right place. I don't have another question about my... Um, uh, the sewing machine mat and it will it is a pattern coming up i am working on it um with sewing street so it will be a pattern that you can buy um on the next show hopefully um so what i'm making is i'm just turning this right side out what i am making is um a mat that you can use on the sofa of your armchair or your you know where the the <laughs> The sofa of your armchair, the arm of your sofa or um, your armchair, you can use underneath your mat or you can use it on your ironing board. So I'm trying, I'm, I'm making one that is going to um, have three purposes. So hopefully you will join me for that. And um, you will find it very useful. I, I mean, just, you know, this is so easy to use. And, you know, having different things attached to it, being able to know where my scissors are all the time if I put them in the right place. Um, 
makes all the difference to my sewing. So I just need to pop the pin in there because I'm going to iron that down. And then I'm going to do, um, as I said, so this is um, an old sewing machine needle and it's it's so much stronger than um, one of my, even my bridesmaid pins, where are they? Those are here. These are bridesmaid pins. I don't know why they're called that, um, but maybe somebody can tell me. I didn't know there were so many different types of pins. Um, but this is an old sewing machine needle and all I'm doing is I'm pulling out those corners as you can see just to try and get them as perfect as I can. I did learn that you can actually put a needle and thread into the corners. So that's another use for our um, thread when we're cutting at the top. Um, you pop a needle and thread in there and then you put a knot in it obviously and then you just pull that thread out and it pulls the corners out. I haven't tried it but I would like to know where do they go? They go in there so make sure it's all goes back. So as you can see He's looking quite cool. When are you on Sewing Street again, Carol? Um, I don't have a date. Um, all I have is that um, they know that I'm doing a show. So as soon as my um, pattern is ready and made, um, then I will have a date. So hopefully it will be within um, the month of February. But it's as quick as we can get the PDF for them and then they can get back to us. So we shall see. I will tell you as soon as I am... As soon as I'm given a date, I will tell you, okay? But I cannot wait. Again, I'm ironing instead of pressing. <laughs> Did anyone buy any of the um, things? As I said, I bought the um, I bought the purple uh, crocus panel. And I actually went on there last night. Um, and I found lots of fabrics that were called Dawn. Um... As Teresa, I'm, I'm not going to say actually, if Teresa is still watching, maybe Teresa can tell me what colour she thinks they were. Um, but I found quite a few fabrics, they were Moda fabrics called Dawn, so I just went on and uh, and filled my shopping bag, <laughs> basket rather. Just going to put that thread back in there. So I just filled up on um, these fabrics called Dawn, because um, they were just so beautiful. See if Teresa is on here and she can probably tell you. If I don't know if anybody else knows me well enough to know what colour they would have been. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a bit of quilting because what will happen when this goes in the wash, um, this is going to move around. So I'm going to sew what they call in the ditch down here. Okay, and then I need to go around the outside because I need to close up that gap. I'm going to do the in the ditch first. Now I'm going to struggle. I know what I'll do. So... Um, if I keep the, if I don't touch this button, this goes backwards and forwards. So this is my um, second stitch, and it's now moved over. So I'll show you that again. So my needle is there, and then there it moves over. Um, and what that does, it's just move my needle across. And I know that if I place this line of the grey down here, Teresa's were they grey? Yes, they were Teresa. <laughs> they were flowers. And it did say in the um, it did say in the in the bit underneath that they were pinks and blues, but I bought three of the grey, so you will be seeing those on here soon. I'm planning on making um, the the sewing machine mat and the the pink cushions. I'm planning on making those out of them. So there was a pink and blue in there I did buy, but it did have some grey in there. <laughs> so yes, Teresa, honestly, Teresa, you made my day the other day. I was telling my husband. But um, I said to one of somebody that um, follows me, um, I said she knows me well enough that she said, oh, well, you would choose grey, wouldn't you? And obviously my Mando background is grey. I do have other colours, I promise you. I just I just love the... Oh, and I'm wearing grey, aren't I? I don't know if you can see. Um, I just love the, um, the calmness of grey. So top stitch as well, we need to do that. So I'm getting distracted. So move down. So we're now this is where the, the light is. This is just how it works on my machine. Okay, Teresa is laughing. Um, I'm going to move that up to a five because I need a top stitch. Okay. I did actually, um, one of my uh, resolutions last year was to not buy anything grey in the year. And I went to a shop and I did buy a blue jumper when they had a navy one. And I did buy um, a red, Nikki Reed actually, she's got the same scarf. I did buy a red scarf, but it did have some grey in there. So 
I am trying. <laughs> Anyone else have a colour that they are obsessed with? What I have learned is though in my demos to not always use the same colours because what happens is you just use the colours that you like and then you'll have other people that will think, oh, I'm not sure about that and they are put off by the colour. So, I mean, you can see that my sewing machine mat is grey. Um, I made that a long time ago. But the new um, pink cushions that I made, um, one's lilac, one's pink, one's sort of a teal colour. So um, if you are making things to sell or you're making gifts for other people, do remember that they don't always like what you like. Okay. Now, because I've done the free motion on here, this isn't... This isn't going to. This isn't perfectly straight. I don't think it's going to matter. I might even do some stippling on here, which is where you just go round in circles and make this look more like a um, a picture frame. So I'm just going to take those threads off. Knew where my scissors were. Pop my scissors back in there. And now I need to do um, close that gap. Um, but I am wondering, actually, if I should practice my um, ladder stitch. No, maybe not. I'm going to do the um, the outside, so I'm going to do some stippling on there. So I think I'm going to change the top. So bear with me. Take that out. So anyone that hasn't seen this before, I always keep some needles to hand. And then I just thread these pieces now the reason for this is you do not pull your um, thread back through your fabric through your machine because the lint off the I know this did start a whole big debate on one of the groups um, a while ago so where is my grey <laughs> even got my grey to hand Teresa um, oh how long did that last Yes, I love red. How long did it last? Um, well, this top I'm wearing now I bought last year, so it obviously didn't last that long, Teresa. Um, but I did try really, really, really hard. And I went to a party, um, this was January last year when we were allowed to do that. I went to a party and um, people did comment on, oh, you're wearing blue. You're wearing um, a red scarf. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so I obviously do do it a lot. There you go, re-threaded that away diane i've actually got a nickname scarlet because of my love of red do you know that's a color i do have this scarf it's more of a burgundy actually so i won't i won't i won't cheat you and say that it is red it is more of a burgundy but um it's just a color that i haven't really got into and i don't know if it's because and um if laura was watching um i used to wear red for work um and that was the first time i'd had red in my wardrobe and then it just kind of put me off um, wearing red because I did have to wear a red top every day um, so yes I don't think it is going to be a colour that I'm going to fall in love with I will never be that lady in red although I do think a red coat um, you know one of those really long ones sort of the 1950s style would be beautiful so I'm going to take my pin out now I didn't iron that so I'm hoping it's just going to stay so I'm starting my top stitching where um, my seam is and I don't have my fabric on the edge here. I've got it on the inside there. Okay, so again, as I said, I'm going to do some stippling over this. But I just want to show you how to finish yours off. So I've changed to grey because it's going to be a little bit harder to see. And all this is doing is this is just securing um, that wadding and the back um, to itself. So that when this goes in the wash, and it will be going in the wash, I'm going to make him... You need to be careful because he is only downstairs. So that we can hear. I'm going to make him five of these so that he's got one for every day. Um, and then, I mean, we do washing every evening. I don't know if you guys do. There's always washing that needs doing in our house. So it will just go in the wash every night. And then you can just get another one, have another one in the day. But I thought if I parcel them up with some ribbon, um, they would look quite nice. The other recipient of these, I haven't seen their name come up, so I think we got away with it. Let's hope. So I do have the black on the back, so I probably should have um, changed my bobbin thread 
um, to a grey because we have got the black but it has given a frame to the back. Now I know some, some maybe Wendy Orlando I know would have changed hers and made sure it was perfect but I'm, I'm not um, as you guys may have picked up I don't worry about the perfect things and I maybe I don't know if I should I should say oh my gosh I am obsessed with the 50s and my dream coat is a 1950s red with black fur that sounds beautiful Teresa um you may be interested in um so we are having a um a logo change so those of you that will notice we have my singer that I was gifted from Nancy so she is now Nancy the singer um we have her as our logo but we are actually um, changing to my nan's um, old machine, which was made in the 1950s, possibly in the 1960s. Um, and we've got lots of her old things. So those are going to be part of the new logo. So you might be interested to see that, Teresa. So there you go. And there is our back. OK, now, as I said, I'm probably I'm going to do some stippling here, which go round in circles just to make that look a bit prettier. But I think you'll agree now. I do have the perfect mug. I did say to my son that I wasn't um I wasn't stealing the mug and I did bring I did bring the uh, biscuit box up. And I promise that these are demonstration purposes only. But that is how you use your mug rug. Um you can make them a little bigger so you can make them longer and then have a special place for um the cookies, but I wanted to just use the the mando um character so there you go. There is my anniversary gift. And I will I will show you the rest. I'm going to use some of the, the other fabrics and have a go at um, free motioning those. So thank you ever so much for um, for joining me this morning. Now, I know um, I did share the post earlier. Um, and this is, um, we didn't buy this. This is one of the, um, the things that was here when we moved. And I thought I would start putting it up because this is, I mean, this house is my husband and my happy place. Um, and this room is my happy place and my sewing machine is my happy place. So um, if, you know, if you're um, needing some inspiration or something to make you smile, then uh, then maybe just think about your sewing machine or your um, embroidery or your knitting or your crafting in general as your happy place. And if you need to go to your happy place, then you can. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Thank you for the messages, everyone. And I will see you on Saturday at 10 a.m. Take care. Bye.